Every year, the calls of cicadas herald in the warmer weather. These odd-looking insects gently buzz way over our heads and remind us of peaceful times. But something is different this year. This year, they're everywhere. The cicadas are emerging in not just the millions, not just the billions, but trillions. They're taking the continent by storm, and the secret to why lies in mathematics and Area 51. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and I'm heading into the heart of a cicada swarm to unravel the mystery of these alien creatures and find out why they're invading our backyards. You hear that behind me? What we're listening to is the calls of millions upon millions of cicadas. We are getting deeper and deeper into the cicada swarm. Hopefully, we'll be able to get up close and personal with some of these really bizarre insects. Here we go. They're kind of all over the place, but this is my first ever, let's see, always oh, screaming. That's my first ever periodical cicada. Look at this little guy, really, really unhappy. You hear him screaming there. They're not terribly loud individually, but as you can hear in the trees behind me, oh man, when they get together in huge, huge groups, they are cacophonous. This right here is probably one of the strangest insects you could possibly ever see. And that's because this is a cicada, but it comes out once every 13 years. This grumpy little insect is the 13 year cicada. And what's crazy about this here is we actually have two broods emerging, a 13-year brood and a 17-year brood, which only happens once every 221 years. Absolutely ridiculous. The last time these guys came out, I was a little kid, and I've been waiting a very, very long time to actually properly get up close and personal with these insects. Let's take a look at its features here. This is a, a once in a 13-year opportunity to actually take a look at these bizarre insects. The coloration is so odd. Orange, black, and red, almost aposematic. I don't think these guys would have very good camouflage out here. He's surprisingly strong as he's sitting here like gripping my fingers. A lot of that has to do with the claws they have. They're really, really good climbers. I know that one of the most prominent things you see are their wings, but these cicadas, kind of clumsy flyers. Now what's funny is they really don't need to be super, super crazy flyers when they're only doing these short bursts from branch to branch and there's also millions of them. If there's millions of you, you really don't need to be able to escape that quickly because there's just so many that it overwhelms a lot of their predators. They're not poisonous, they're not venomous, not at all dangerous to people, just really, really strange. Now that distress call he's making there is an attempt to get me to let him go. And you can actually see when he really, really pumps it, you can see his, his thorax here expanding and contracting. So you might think that cicadas can make their noise by rubbing their wings together like crickets, but it's actually different. They're vibrating little pieces of shell inside their thorax here that actually makes that noise almost closer to like the metal clickers that you'd use to train a dog than it is the way crickets actually make their noise really really bizarre they have one singular purpose when they're out here in the droves they are all looking for mates that loud sound that cicadas make when they're up in the trees just screaming their heads off they're basically yelling hey i'm over here anybody interested and when you have millions and millions and millions of cicadas calling out and hoping that willing suitors will come and hang out with them you get that really loud echoing, just booming buzz that you can hear behind me. What I really like about them is, is they almost look kind of like giant flies. I mean, I mean, look at that, like the big black body, those translucent wings, and those big old eyes in the front. But what's crazy is they're actually not related to flies at all. They're actually just huge leaf hoppers. And these insects are absolutely everywhere. The ground is littered with the holes they emerged from, discarded shells from their final molts, and even carcasses of those that have already died. Wherever you turn, you are further reminded of the invasion army of cicadas that is on us in droves. But what's so special about this year 
When most years we have a seemingly normal amount of cicadas, what's caused the depths of hell to open up and unleash this otherworldly swarm on us? The answer might surprise you. Like other plant hoppers, the cicada is an herbivore. And like a lot of these herbivorous hemipterans, they're not that great at defending themselves. So they need a different strategy to survive. Have a look at this little guy. That is a little katydid. Like the cicadas, they're herbivores. And a lot of these leaf katydids don't have a whole lot of ways to defend themselves if they're actually faced in a confrontation with a predator. So they opt to avoid the confrontation altogether. You can see he's staying super, super still, hoping that his camouflage means I can't see him. But those striking red-eyed cicadas, they don't have camouflage like this. They stick right out. But what if that's the point? This invasion is systematic. The cicadas come in waves, each larger than the last, like tiny bug-eyed aliens launching an assault. And the ties to extraterrestrial activity don't end here. I mentioned this is related to Area 51. You're probably wondering how, right? Well. Let me explain. At this point, Area 51 has become a part of American folklore. Those who believe that extraterrestrials have made contact with humanity believe that the evidence lurks deep within the Nevada Air Force Base. And in 2020, there was a plan to storm the base and find the truth. The U.S. Air Force is warning more than one million people not to try and raid Area 51. On Facebook, the Storm Area 51 event had over two million people sign up as going. While the raid never actually happened and was mostly a hoax, the idea was basically that if enough people stormed the base, someone would get far enough to actually uncover its secrets. This psychology of you can't arrest us all, surprisingly enough, is very very similar to the actual strategy that the cicadas are using. Oh, that's not right. Look at these ants. They're just tearing the cicada absolutely apart. It's kind of creepy. You can actually see how the cicada moves. Because there's just so many ants just using those scissor-like jaws to tear this thing apart. They're going to be dragging it back to their colony. It's some kind of carpenter ant, so I'm guessing they're probably living in one of the logs along the trail here. But this is insane. Everything out here is getting a feast because these cicadas are everywhere. The ants, the lizards, the snakes, turtles, birds, everything. Because normally you have to work hard to get food out here in the middle of the forest. But when cicadas are out in the billions, you kind of have like injured cicadas falling at your lap. There are so many cicadas that basically Anything that eats bugs out here is getting meals, and that is actually part of their strategy. See, this is, this is one cicada feeding all of these ants, right? Well, what happens when you have millions of cicadas feeding millions of different animals out here, and then there's still millions more cicadas, right? There are so many freaking cicadas out here that literally all of their predators combined physically cannot eat all of them, which means that some of them are guaranteed to survive. So if predators are getting more resources, you're probably wondering, wouldn't their populations grow exponentially with the cicadas? And wouldn't that make the cicadas strategy kind of obsolete? Well. It's actually a great observation. I can tell someone's been studying their ecology, but there's actually more to it than that. The secret to the swarming strategy's success lies in mathematics. Periodical cicadas emerge in 13 and 17 year cycles, depending on the species. Most of their predators, birds and other insects, only live three to four years on the high end. These are small round numbers, 13 and 17, aren't. In fact, 13 and 17 are prime numbers, which means they can only be divisible by themselves. So if their predators have three, four, even five year lifespans, it takes a very long time for them to actually line up with the cycle of the cicadas, which means while this generation of predators is getting absolutely spoiled, the next generation, not so much. Populations will boom, but those new predators are going to have a lot less food than their parents did. And that means that populations will normalize long before the next cicada brood emerges. And that means the next swarm will catch them by surprise 
just like this one did. Just like their predecessors did 13 years ago, the cicadas in North Carolina are absolutely overwhelming everything in their path. Some studies suggest cicadas' coverage is so dense that the epicenters of these swarms could see over 1.5 million cicadas per acre. With astronomical numbers like that, the real question boils down to this. What does this mean for us? The last time these cicadas emerged, I was very little. In fact, the cicadas were older than I was. I remember thinking, this is so cool, because even on non-cicada years, I spent most of my time outside poking around. Even as a kid, I absolutely loved insects. I think what always drew me to them was just how weird they were. Insects were some of the weirdest things I had ever seen, and yet they were alive. They were living creatures just like me. And whenever I was outside, I tried to find the weirdest and most unusual ones I could find. And even to this day, I'm always trying to find some of the weirdest and most unusual life forms I can possibly find. These periodical cicadas are no exception. And while I may be very excited about them, I can understand why some people would not. They're everywhere, they're kind of creepy looking, and they're loud and annoying. But as loud and annoying and creepy looking as they may be, these cicadas might be more important than you think. Emerging in the trillions means lots and lots of bugs. This is true. But these cicadas don't live terribly long, and the ones that don't get eaten will eventually clatter to the ground too, their empty husks becoming compost for the local plant life. It's not just birds and other animals that are reaping the reward of this mega swarm, but all of the living things within their vicinity. And if we pause a moment to really take it all in, how remarkable is it that these odd insects are so clever that they're using mathematics to cheat Mother Nature? Our world is full of odd stories of success just like this, from the most arid environments to the densest jungles. Nature isn't perfect, but she's doing her best, and the life forms we see on our planet are the best versions that nature could come up with to fill each particular role in the ecosystem. It turns out, coming out every 13 or 17 years is actually really effective if you want to survive as a cicada. And so, every 13 to 17 years, we see these massive swarms of cicadas as the complex circle of life continues in the ever-present secret world that we live alongside. They may look strange, and you're right, they are quite strange. But these cicadas are just simple creatures trying to make their way in the universe, looking for love the only way they know how by flying around and screaming. It may feel like an alien invasion, but at the end of the day, they're not so different from us after all. And of course, they do come in peace. Well, I would say this cicada has had just about enough of us. Let me see if I can get him to fly away here. Go on. Go on. There he goes. I gotta say, it's so exciting to be able to be out here in the middle of a cicada swarm to see the emergence of periodical cicadas. The last time they came out, they were older than I was. And to be able to actually get up close and personal with these unusual little insects, nothing beats that. And these cicadas, they're weird. They're, they're very weird. I mean, how many, how many animals can you think of that their entire strategy is just overwhelm their predators, right? Like the cicadas, our planet is full of so many more unusual secrets. One of the weirdest ones, I think, is probably the fact that we have plants that can eat insects. Now, of course, they're not in this area hunting the cicadas, but if you want to learn more about the super unusual world of carnivorous plants, check out this video right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.